the Z-Locked Challenge. The rules are simple. We're not allowed to turn by traditional means. Every single room is an entirely new puzzle to overcome. Can you beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time while Z-Locked? Hey there, friendos, Dubon Kilik here, welcoming you back to another awesome Z Lock challenge. Now, last time we bested the most difficult room in the challenge up to this point, which of course was getting the Megaton Hammer. Now, however, we must set our sights on the Spirit Temple and potentially the most difficult boss to fight in a Z Lock challenge, Twin Rova. However, before we go to the Spirit Temple, there are a couple things that we need to take care of, namely obtaining the Lens of Truth. In case you missed the last couple episodes, or if you're new to the series, the main rule to the challenge is pretty much we're not allowed to press left or right unless we are also holding Z. If you're interested in reading up on the full rules, they'll be down in the description below. But back to the bottom of the well, honestly, this can be completed in just a few minutes if you know exactly where to go. Play Zelda's lullaby for that weird creepy hand statue thing, not really sure what that's all about. Then we're allowed to head straight to Dead Hand, using the little ledge around the area where you're supposed to crawl in to give yourself a good angle to crawl into his lair. It's just a slight refresher, you can choose to face toward or away from the ledge depending on when you press the Z button. This is going to be our main method of movement throughout the entire game. If I'm honest, Dead Hand was pretty much vanilla if you know the cheese strats, but you do need to be careful wiggling out of the hands or you'll find yourself taking turns more often than a battle in Pokemon. With our grubby little paws on the lens of truth, we can make our way to the Gerudo Desert. Some people aren't really aware you don't actually need Epana at all throughout the entire game. She does make it pretty nice when you're traveling from point A to point B across the vast Hyrule field, but completely optional. Actually, you can just hookshot over on the sign on the other side of the valley here and you are good to go. Navigating the Gerudo hideout is pretty manageable with a combination of ledge turning and bomb turning, however the fights with the Gerudo guards are a completely different story. Much like the Wolfos, they always try to get around behind us and knock us out, meaning we would have to start back from the jail cell they throw us in, which we pretty much cannot escape unless we happen to have bombs at our disposal. But we need those bombs to navigate the fortress, so getting caught here really isn't an option. The stakes are high and they are formidable warriors, but eventually we found some strats to make these fights quite a bit easier. You see, the guards will not block a spin attack if it is spaced perfectly. And I mean perfectly. This was very similar to what we did with Dark Link and how if he was just kind of off screen, he wouldn't block things. There were certain blind spots in Dark Link's defense, and this is exactly the same with the Gerudo Warriors here. This would allow us, along with a well-placed bomb jump, to free the Carpenters and move to the Haunted Wasteland. The Poe that leads you to the Desert Colossus is a huge pain. I suppose if you knew the route, you could probably just go there yourself, but being a scrub as I am, I need that boy to lead me there and he is way too fast to do that while locked onto him. Locking onto the Poe will make you move too slow and inevitably make you turn accidentally and have to restart the entire area. Ask me how I know. But eventually with enough trial and error, we managed to make it happen and we gain access to the Spirit Temple. Grab the song and become a child, making a quick stop to grab Nehru's love, as this could very well be useful at later points during the run. Getting Pack on track, the child portion of the Spirit Temple is actually pretty straightforward, all things considered, of course. Now things could get a little bit tricky in the room containing the small key, but it's easily negated by just save warping back to the entrance. Moving forward, eliminating all of the enemies in the Lizolfos room will give us some very useful chests that we can use to manipulate our angles as we need without using our valuable bombs and health. The main room with the statue is no issue at all, as we're pretty much gifted the angle that we need while pushing the stone down onto the blue switch. The Beemos room hides a key that can be pretty tricky to obtain while Z-locked. We have to light all the torches and pull the sun block into the beam of sun, and that's a little bit tricky. Clearing out the Beemos and making an absolute mad dash to light the torches, which I should say is not at all free, will allow us to obtain the key and move on to the next important room. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, the Iron Knuckle fight is pretty much vanilla. That being said, I still almost died. Oh my goodness. Chat, I am terrified right now. I want you to know that was the spookiest thing that's ever happened in my life. That was some spaghetti. That was like matrix level spaghetti. Putting that behind us, we can finally obtain these silver gauntlets and we're ready for the next part of the temple. Entering the temple as an adult, we have to take the right path this time. This would take a little bit of work to get situated towards. However, with a few concussions, we can easily manage to 
do so. The boulder room and the like like room are fairly straightforward as long as we can keep our distance from the like like, we have our first key, no problem. A quick bomb turn to the key door that'll lead us to the main room, and we are good to go. Moving forward just a little bit to the main room with the statue, jumping to their hand is actually pretty tricky. You see, we need to get up there to play Zelda's lullaby, but this is probably one of the trickiest jumps we've made in the game. Luckily, this is still manageable, as you may have seen while we're still Z-locked, we can still move in a fairly narrow cone forward without going into the sidewalk animation. From here, we can hookshot to the newly dropped chest from the stairs in front of the statue. Luckily, the blue switch that the child uses is still there and perfectly serviceable to turn us all the way around. This will move our orientation towards the locked door that we need to use this key on and we are allowed to head further into the temple. At this point our supplies were running pretty low. Magic and especially bombs as I had mentioned earlier are vital tools to use in this run. However the next room with the Anubis and all of the holes in the floor would be simple if we had Din's fire but we're just short of the magic cost. Leaving to get supplies presents its own series of problems and trials so we decided to try and push through it. This, however, would end up being a huge mistake. The time constraint that we have to work with is theoretically possible, but in practice, Link just grabs the edge far too often. Eventually, we did die in rather comedic fashion. It's like, I gotta be fast. Oh, wait, there's a dead boy. God damn it, I'm the dead boy instead. That's a full heart, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. One supply run later with Din's fire in hand, and this room is a cinch. The blue switch room with the four almost knights in it is surprisingly simple if you're willing to be just a little bit patient. Just aggro the armos across from the switch and stand near the door. Wait for him to lose interest and he will hit the switch on the way back, allowing just enough time to enter the door. The timing is a little bit precise, but if you spam the button you should be just fine. Really nothing to say about the iron knuckle fight. However, in this room I decided to place Pharaoh's wind for some reason. I'm not really sure why I did this, I was just like... Sure, whatever, go ahead, do it. Maybe I die to the iron knuckle. I mean, it nearly happened when we were a kid. I kind of tend to you know, turn off a little bit during these fights. So as it turns out, I was right to do that. The real adventure is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Which... Being very careful to get the mirror shield, we're allowed to move further into the temple. Moving on to the large wall room, this room is easily bypassed by a <clears throat> totally on purpose enemy turn. With this new angle, the long shot will allow us to pretty much skip the entire room. Using a small exploit, we can easily skip the puzzle for the boss key, and there's not much else to talk about before the boss, just move the mirrors into place. However, I did experience something here that I had never seen before. I didn't even know it was possible, but this little piece of information would become vital later in the run. I didn't really know what happened here at the time, but as it turns out, there was a stray frame of light reflecting off of my shield that just happened to hit the sun. This will be important later. Much later. Shining the mirror shield onto the sun to lower the platform down to the boss room, I thought of something. Technically, we're not allowed to move left or right even while Link is crouched. And Shant agreed with me on this. The rules very clearly state, if left or right is being pressed, the Z button must be pressed as well. So that complicates things with the Twin Rova fight significantly. Given that we were already in the boss room when this was brought up, we decided to overlook this little issue. It's perfectly possible to hit this sun without moving left or right on the joystick while crouched. It's just a bit more complicated and tedious is all. Slap another iron knuckle and cat jam to the best song in the game. Moving on to Twin Rova. Do you remember how I said we're not allowed to crouch and move the stick left or right? Well, that is true. And that would also take what is normally a very simple fight and make it painfully difficult. I'm gonna try to get through this boss fight without getting too tilted. Just thinking about it right now is really starting to crisp my bacon. Anyone who's done this knows how inconsistent this part can be even while locked onto one of the witches. First off we tried doing this as we do any other fight without locking on and without moving left or right while crouched. It went terrible. It was absolutely awful. So we decided to lock on. 
and that was still awful. You see, the witches have a tendency to be on the other side of the room from one another. They very rarely kind of stack up and stand right next to each other. There's only a certain angle in front of you that you can block one witch's attack and reflect it towards the other one. With that in mind, as long as you prioritize defense and are sure to get the hell out of the way whenever one of the witches is attacking you that you can't do anything about because they moved around behind you, the fight's not that bad, right? Eventually, with enough patience, we managed to defeat the first phase, and you would think that things would get a lot easier from here on out. But oh, how wrong you would be. It is true that knocking Twinrova down is very simple. It's actually pretty much vanilla. Actually getting over to attack her is another story entirely. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there's also this really awesome part where she just refuses to get in front of you sometimes, and there's pretty much nothing that you can do about it. Pretty much just wait and hope she lets you get a Z-lock on her. But again, even when you manage to do that, the best you can do is hookshot over, get a few hits in, and then jump off and restart the entire process over. This fight that normally takes five-ish minutes on a bad day took an hour. And yes, we died. But in the end, we managed to defeat likely the most annoying and difficult boss in the entire game under these restrictions. Now, I say that knowing that Bongo Bongo is up next. One of the most difficult bosses casually, how does he fare in Zilok Challenge? Will Bongo Bongo be able to take the title of the most difficult boss while Zilok? That, my friends, is a story for another time. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love the video that's on screen right now. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Thank you so much for my patrons, channel members, and Twitch supporters. Thanks for the like. Thanks for the sub. I'm Newborn Keelik, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.